Here we have um, the beginning of our word problems for exponential functions. So one of the things now that we have um, exponentials is we can talk about um, some more complicated interest problems. So before we always had the interest problem where you had PRT. That was called simple interest, where you took your investment or your loan, you multiplied it by the rate, and you multiplied it by how long you had that loan or that rate, and that gave you the amount of interest. And if you wanted to know the total, um, the total amount, which they used as an A, then you would basically just take what the loan was or what you invested and add the amount of interest, right? That was simple interest. Now what we get into is what's called compound interest. So that means that they don't just calculate the interest once throughout the life of the deposit or the loan. Um, here they're compounding the amount of interest multiple times within a year, not just once per year. Okay, and so that's where this number in comes into play because in is actually the number of times per year that this interest is being um, computed and either added to your balance for your loan or added to your bank account for your deposit, right? Um, the other variables still stay the same. T is still time, R is still rate, P is still the investment or the loan, and then A is still the total amount. And then this is not an L, it's a one, the number one because you always have to pay the amount of the loan as well as the interest, right? Or you always have the amount of money you put in your bank plus the amount of interest that you earned, okay? So that's just to represent the original amount included in the total value. So let's go into a problem here. It says, suppose that $2,500 is deposited in an account paying 3% interest per year compounded semi-annually or twice per year. So in this particular example, it says find the amount in the account after 10 years with no withdrawals. So I know that I'm depositing this so that I know that P is 2,500. I know that the rate is 3%, which we have to use as a decimal. So it's gonna be 0 0.03. And then I know that my time is gonna be 10 years. And I also notice that I'm gonna compound it semi-annually, which is twice per year. So my n is equal to two. That's all the numbers I need to figure out the total value. So the number one plus 0 0.03 over n raised to the t times n. Now, all of that is numbers. There's no variables in this expression here, which means I can type all of this in my calculator. How do we do that? We type 2500 parentheses one plus um, 0 0.03 fraction two, go to the side, close your parentheses, raise it, and do 10 times two. So you just type it in there exactly the way it is. And this is money, so we around to the nearest cent so that 7 is going to turn into 14 so 3367 and 14 cents now how much interest is earned over the 10 year period so they just want to know the interest right not the total amount so what you have to do is you have to take the total and subtract the principal which means I have to take A and subtract the P, and that's how I will figure out what the interest is. So I'm going to take 3367.14, and I'm gonna take out what was originally deposited. Since I already have 3367.14 minus 2500, I get 867.14. So that's how much interest was made off of that 2,500 deposit 10 years ago. Now, um, we're gonna get into another example. Let's see what this one looks like. So it says, 
what amount deposited today, okay, um, which is your P, okay, so what amount deposited today, so I don't know the P, the P is unknown, at a 2% rate, so rate equals 2.4%, which is the same as 0 0.024 um, compounded annually compounded annually which means n equals only one per year and then will give me this amount of money so that's the total amount at the end of everything and my time is eight years so let's plug it in I have a which is 15,000 equal P is unknown, 1 plus R over N raised to the T times N. Now, this whole thing is not numbers, so I can't put the whole thing in my calculator, but this part is certainly all numbers. So I can put all of that in my calculator. So let's see what we get. Parentheses, 1 plus 0 0.024 over 1, side, close the parentheses, raised to the 8 times 1. And I get 1.2. Now I'm going to write the whole number down because you don't want to round too soon. And I'm going to keep that in my calculator so I can use it in a minute. How do I solve for P when P is multiplied by a number? You simply divide both sides by that number. And so then I'll have P equals, and over here I'm going to do 1,500, 15,000, I'm sorry, divided by, and I'm going to put this answer in there. So second, and then answer. And that way I'm not rounding it too soon. So that 9 is going to change this to 71 cents. So 12,407.70. So this is the amount of money that I would have to put into the account right now in order for it to total $15,000 in eight years. Now, it says, if I only deposit $12,025 right now, what annual interest rate is necessary for the money to increase to 15,000? So now they're telling me what P equals. The rate is still, I don't know that, it's actually saying what is the interest rate, right? We know time is eight, and we know the amount at the end has to be fifteen hundred dollars, fifteen thousand, um, and the amount of money or the annual annual interest rate. It's still compounded annually, so we're still going to use one for n. So let's plug everybody in and see what this looks like. Um, P one plus r which is we don't know i'm going to leave it as r over n and then raise to the n or t times n so we get fifteen thousand and then we get one plus just r and then to the power eight and so how do you solve this you have to get rid of the coefficient first before you can get rid of the power. So we're going to have to divide both sides by 1225. So let's see, 15,000 divided by 12025. I get this number here. I'm going to write it as a fraction just so that I don't round it too soon. Then I need to get rid of the eighth power, which means I need to take the eighth root. This is definitely going to be interesting. Okay, whenever you take an even root, you're automatically going to get plus or minus. So this is going to cancel and I'm going to get one plus r by itself. Over here, I'm going to get plus or minus, and then I have to take the eighth root of that. You can do that in your calculator. It's actually this button right here above the, it's the green part above the exponent button. 
So if I type in the index that I want, eight, and then I type in second in that button right there, it's gonna put the eight. Notice how the eight went from a big eight to a little tiny index. And then inside I can write 600 over 481. And so I'm gonna write that whole number down. And I'm gonna leave it in my calculator, okay? Now, the easy one to do is 1.028018125 equal to one plus r and negative 1.028018125 equal to one plus r. The easy one to do is to subtract one. You don't need to do that in your calculator. If I subtract one, I'm gonna end up with 0 0.28018125 and so on, okay? Over here is harder. When I subtract one, I'm actually gonna end up with negative 2.028018125. Now, does that make sense for a rate? No, your rate cannot have a negative value. That means, well, actually that means your numbers would be decreasing, okay? And it's not, because if I started off with this amount and it rate to 15,000, then my values were not decreasing they were increasing. So I shouldn't be getting this negative rate here. This one doesn't make sense. It has to be the positive rate. Now, this is a decimal number. This is not a percentage. Normally with the rates, they want it in a percentage and they normally want the percentage rounded to the 10th place. So first let's convert it into a de uh, percentage. So that's 28.018125% and then um oh i missed a zero that's the problem i should have 0 0.028 there we go so when i move the decimal over twice it's going to be 2.8018125 there we go and then now if I round this to the tenths, the zero is not going to change that. So it's approximately 2.8%. So notice it's a little tiny bit more than the 2.4% to make 12407 go to 15000 Here I'm only have, I have about $400 less and my percentage went up a little bit. And it has to in order for it to give me that same value. Okay, so now we're going to do talk about the development of E, okay? So if you just look at the um, exponential expression 1 plus 1 over n to the power n, and you plug this in for 1, so let me put that in there. Parentheses 1 plus 1 over, I'm going to use x, and then close it raised to the power x. I'm going to ignore the first value because I have no idea what x was last in my calculator. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in all of these values for x or for n. So store it as 1 and then now calculate that expression. We get 2. Then 2 stores x and I'm going to go plug it into that expression and I get decimal 2.25. 5 stores x, go plug it in, make sure I get the decimal, 2.48832. 10 stores x, go plug it in, it'll make it a decimal as well, 2.59374246. 100 stores x, 2.70481382900 1000 stores x so i'm just filling out the table i'm not doing anything fancy um 2.71692393210 10000 stores x 2.71692 Four five nine two seven, and then one million one two three one two three stores x. 
we get 2.71828 So notice that the numbers are starting to get real close to each other now, right? Um, what is happening as the this value here keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger is that it starts getting closer and closer and closer to a certain number, okay? And that number is actually 2.71828.1828, okay? And it doesn't keep going um, 1828.1828. It actually starts getting different after that, okay? So it's not a repeating decimal. Um, this value we now call E. Just like how you know that pi is 3.14159, so on and so forth, um, that's got a particular value and they use an expression for that value instead of that crazy decimal that pops up a lot in nature, especially in circles, right? Well, the same thing happens here when you're doing um, interest problems. You don't want to use this ugly number all the time so what they do is they start using the abbreviated number, which is just E, okay? So E is not a variable, it is a number. It's the same as 2.1 or 2.718, okay? So you have to remember, just like you remember that pi is 3.14, you have to remember that E is 2.718, okay? It's the same sort of thing. So when they start getting into what's called continuous compounding, this is different from um, compounding a certain number of times. This means every like millisecond, they're constantly calculating the interest and they're either adding it to your bank account or they're adding it to your balance for a loan. Okay, it's non-stop. It's continually, 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 continually calculating that interest, okay? So of course, if you have an account where you are making money, you deposited some money and you're, it's being compounded interest, this is most likely gonna get you the most money at the end. Or if you have a loan, you definitely don't want to get a loan that has a continuous, that's compounding interest continuously because that means you're gonna to have to pay the most amount of money back at the end, okay? So I'm gonna stop the video here because I'm already running into 17 minutes, but we will do some problems with that particular um, value E. Actually, you know what, I only have two more examples, so let me just finish it. We might finish this in 20 minutes. So here it says, suppose that $800 is deposited, so that's my P value, in an account paying 5% interest, so that's my rate, which is the same as 0 0.05, compounded continuously, which means I need to use the E formula, not the one plus, there's two of them. There's this one, and then there's this one. If they say the word continuously, you have to use the formula with the E, okay? So that immediately, as soon as I saw that, I immediately know I need to use this formula, okay? For six years, which means my time is gonna be six years, find the total amount, so find A, on a deposit at the end of six years. So I don't know what A is, but I know that P is 8,000, E is just a number, R is 0 0.05, and T is six. So this is a times table, or you could just use parentheses, okay? So I'm gonna go in here, and I'm gonna say 8,000, and notice that this LN button, right above it, it has E to a power. So I'm gonna hit second, and then that LN button, and now I can type in 0 0.05 times six. And then I hit enter, and it tells me it is this number. The zero is not gonna affect that, so it stays 87 cents. So the 8,000 in six years will grow to 10,798.87, okay? So, now, um, this is a classroom. So basically, they just want us to use the same information and notice the difference for um, the different um, compounding annually, semi-annually, quarterly, monthly, daily, so on and so forth. 
So it says we found the total amount on a deposit after 10 years in an account paying 3% interest semi-annually in which 2,500 was invested. Find the amounts from the same investment for interest compounded quarterly, monthly, daily, and continuously. So I don't know why they have this um, thing here because P is 25. So I'm just going to erase this and erase this. I don't know what those things are there for. Um, but we're going to use. Now remember, continuously means to use this formula. All of these mean to use this formula. Okay. Now annually means my in value is going to equal one. Semi-annually means twice per year. Quarterly means four. Monthly means 12. And daily, depending on what book you're using, it could be 360, which is the one I think our book uses. But if not, it could be 364 or it could be 365. It all just depends on the book. If you get one that says daily, I would click on view an example and see what number they're using for in. That way, when you go back to your problem, you're using the correct in. You know which one of these to use, okay? Um, because it does matter, it will change it just a little bit. I'm gonna use 360 because I believe that's the one that we use in this textbook. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use P is the 2,500, we're using T is 10, and R is 3%, which is the same as 0 0.03. So we're gonna have, um, our A value is gonna be 2,500, one plus 0 0.03 over one, and then 10 times one. If I plug in this one, it's all the same values, except for n is now two. And this one again, same formula, but n is now four. Now n is 12. And then the last one where n is 360. And then finally, the continuously, which is 2500e and then 0 0.03 times 10. I'll use the parentheses instead of the dot. And so I'm just going to plug every single one of these in my calculator and see what I get here. So 2500 parentheses 1 plus 0 0.03 over 1 parentheses raised to the 10 times 1. And I get 3359.79. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to change the 1 down here and the 1 up there to 2's. So it's a 2 there and a two there. And we get 3367.14. Then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna change them to a four. Oops, I didn't do that right. I changed it to a one, not a four. There we go. Bottom is a four, exponent is a four. Then again, and I'm going to change the 4 to a 12. And then finally, I'm going to change the 12 to a 360. So you notice that the more times that it's compounded per year, the more money that I'm getting at the end of the year or the more money that I'm having to pay back at the end of the loan, right? So, but it's not increasing or decreasing by a whole lot. Notice that it went from 3359 to 3374. So, and that's over a 10 year period. So really it's just increasing by like a seven bucks extra or whatever that is, 74 minus, 59 by 13 bucks per year. So it's not a whole, whole lot. That's not too bad. 
Um, but again, that's because the rate is really, really low. It's only 3%. Now, last one, 2,500. And then e to the power 0 0.03 times 10. And I get 3374.6 five so notice that if they're doing it every day it's not that much different as if they're doing it every millisecond it's only a five cent difference in ten years okay so if they tell you oh it's not compounded continuously this loan is only compounded daily that's still a lot okay that's still going to be pretty much the same thing okay that is the end of this section I know it's a pretty long video I apologize for that but I couldn't find a cutting point and since there was only these two examples left I didn't want to chop it off and do it like a five minute video so that is the end of 4.3 and or 4.2 and we'll get into 4.3 um, next